Hi everyone, I'm Laura Ingram reporting tonight for Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us. Our Do Nothing Congress, that's the subject of tonight's Talking Points memo. Today the House of Representatives left for its August vacation with an abysmal record of accomplishment for the American people. When Congress voted to head out on summer recess despite its failure to pass critical legislation to expand domestic oil production, many of us sadly were not surprised. The anti-exploration Democrats, led by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, acted more like schoolyard bullies during recess than national leaders as they refused to allow votes on any proposal, even those supported by moderate Dems, by the way, that would have allowed for more domestic oil production. Repeat, understand this. Speaker Pelosi was afraid to permit votes on measures that would undoubtedly increase domestic energy supplies, thereby reducing the price of gasoline at the pump for all Americans. Republicans tried unsuccessfully to force a vote on oil exploration, which Pelosi and company resisted. Democrats did this by shutting down almost the entire appropriations process on Capitol Hill. Three cheers for bold thinking, Nancy. A number of Republicans did stay behind to protest and they demanded a vote only to have cameras, microphones, and even the lights shut off on them. So, since it hasn't addressed our energy woes, what exactly has the Democrat-controlled House done for us lately? These are a few of the hallmark achievements that they'll undoubtedly brag about back home. Congress authorized the FDA to regulate tobacco. How exactly the FDA can assure the safety of cigarettes is beyond me. It also apologized for slavery and Jim Crow laws. Then we find out that all of this was part of an effort to help Tennessee Democrat Congressman Steve Cohn win his primary challenge from the Black Challenger. And oh, let's not forget, the House Transportation Committee, this important piece of legislation, moved to ban in-flight cell phone use. Now contrast this with some of the things accomplished recently by one of Nancy Pelosi's favorite targets, the Iraqi government. A depathification law, new Iraqi brigades formed, October elections planned, and even a Sunni voting bloc returning to parliament. I would rate Nouri al-Maliki's leadership over Nancy Pelosi's hands down. Since it did virtually nothing in recent months to alleviate our energy woes, Congress should have done at least what so many families have had to do this summer because of high gas prices, cancel their vacation plans. Both Senators Obama and McCain are in Florida campaigning today and a brand new Quinnipiac poll shows 60% of likely Florida voters favor offshore drilling. Barack Obama still adamantly against it. Speaker Nancy Pelosi still stonewalling on offshore drilling. She will not even consider it. Won't even let Congress vote on it. Pelosi saying she's trying to save the planet. My next guest says she's hurting the planet. Charles Krautheimer is a syndicated columnist. Charles, welcome to the program. Pleasure uh, to be with you. I, I don't honestly recall a significant politician using the global warming save the planet expression in, in this campaign. Well, the, the Democrats know that on drilling they've got a loser. And they know that they have no arguments in terms of economics. We're shipping huge amounts overseas. They have no arguments in terms of national security if we're drilling uh, at home. It, it saves us from our dependency on a lot of unstable, unfriendly places. All they have is the argument about the planet, the environment. We want to save the environment. But if you look closely at that argument, you've got to understand that Americans are going to use oil one way or the other. They're going to have to get their oil one way or the other. And if it's not going to be domestic, our production at home, as you know, has declined by almost half since 1970. It's going to come from somewhere. And this somewhere is places like Nigeria, where there are spills and explosions and sabotage all the time, it leaks into the ground, places like uh, the Russian Arctic. Does she really think that the Russians are going to be more scrupulous in caring about the ecology of the area than the United States. Well, that's a fair we, point, Charles, but is global warming, is there, is there that big a global warming worry in America? Is there that big uh, a global warming vote in America? Look, the fact is that we are not going to change our transportation out of petroleum, carbon-based stuff, for a decade or two or three. After that, everybody agrees you can do solar or wind. If you want to use wind, uh, to run a car today, you're going to have to strap a sail on your roof. So for the near 
bleak future, which means a couple of the decades, we're going to have to use stuff that we have used in the past. The only question is, is it going to come out of American wells or out of Saudi, Russian, Iranian wells? And that's the issue at hand. Uh, if she had a magic wand and could produce transportation, cars and planes that run on something else, they wouldn't be a debate. But everybody understands that's decades away. What's really happened today is Democrats are cracking. They're falling apart because they know that the public uh, detests their position of no more exploration and drilling offshore in Alaska, in the Rockies. Uh, they have a losing position. The latest Gallup tracking poll, Charles, has it tied, literally tied, 44% to 44%. Now, Sunday, Barack Obama was up nine points, 49 to 40. Do you think energy has a part of this move? I'm not sure it's had an impact yet on the presidential race. I think the, the sagging of Obama has to do with the sagging of America's opinion of him slightly after the way he overreached in Europe. Uh, I think the sheen from earlier uh, this year where he was seen as kind of a, a streaking meteor and he was the candidate of hope. I think it was Britt Hume who said that uh, he started by the year by selling hope, but now he's selling audacity. Um, and it, it, I, I, I think there's a sourness setting. And then you see it even in the mainstream press when you get Dana Milbank of the Washington Post write a brilliant article in which he says Obama started out as the presumptive Democratic nominee, and now he's the presum presumptuous uh, de Democratic nominee. So there's sort of a turn in the zeitgeist. Where the energy issue is hitting is in the Congress. Uh, the Democrats have made a huge mistake here, the stubbornness of Pelosi and Reid in not allowing a vote. After meeting with his cabinet, President Bush came to the Rose Garden to again slam Congress over its inability to pass an energy bill. The second pointed jab in as many days, a presidential prodding on domestic oil drilling with the timeline. All the Democratic leaders have to do is to allow a vote. They should not leave Washington without doing so. Early in the day, the prospects for compromise in the Senate seemed at least possible. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid had offered Republicans votes on four amendments to an oil speculation bill, amendments that included expanding domestic drilling. Republicans wanted more, but were ready to accept the deal. By late morning, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell told reporters Reid's offer had been rescinded. I've been told this morning that that offer is no longer out there. And if that's the case, we're going to have a hard time uh, legislating on the number one issue in the country. Reid said on the Senate floor that Republicans wanted too much, and they wouldn't agree to a new demand to first approve a bill to invest in alternative energy. Because the Republicans have blocked everything. They blocked energy for old people, sick people, disabled people. They've blocked everything we've tried to do. Democrats continued to blame Republicans all day. When Big Oil says jump, they say how high. And their only solution seems to be drilling. Energy Secretary Sam Bodman insists that his department is working hard on renewable energy, wind, solar, and nuclear power, while developing technology on hydrogen fuel cells, biofuels, and clean coal. He says the U.S. should have expanded domestic drilling 10 years ago, and the bottom line is that this country needs more oil and natural gas now. I think it's very important, but also I would point out that I'm the guy that has to go to uh, Saudi Arabia and make the case that you should produce, you should increase your production, and uh, by the way, we at home are not doing anything. I mean, that's a pretty tough sell. On the House side, Speaker Nancy Pelosi has blocked efforts to vote on any expansion of domestic drilling, prompting a pushback even from within her own party. Congress has done nothing to respond. We can't pass a bill. Can't pass the House, can't pass the Senate. It's not working. Despite Democratic denial, senior Republican aides insist that the Democrats don't want to have to have Senator Barack Obama cast a vote against domestic drilling.